Hi everyone, hello. Can you all hear me? I hope so. Ludo, can you hear me? I can indeed. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you all of you for being here. Um, I would say good evening. Um, yeah, but it's still, it's very hot outside, 30 degrees. So thank you for being here, not outside. <laughs> um, let's start the, uh, uh, our presentation. And uh, during the presentation, we're going to have, we're going to ask you some questions as well. And uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, uh, feel free to ask all your questions. You can already put your questions in the chat if you like. And my colleague Ludo will answer them uh, during the presentation, or we will answer them all anyway at the end of the presentation. And also afterwards, you're going to receive a uh, this presentation uh, via email, the PowerPoint presentation and everything, the video. So uh, in about a day or two, it will be on your email. And I believe it's going to be on YouTube as well within other, uh, a few days as well. So um, yeah. Uh, and you can also, always, of course, book an intake with us after the presentation after the, uh, tomorrow or so um, and get if you forget something feel free to send us an email or to give us a call let's move further let's go content what are we going to talk about a little bit introduction of uh, our company um, market info market drivers savings uh, what kind of savings you need and uh, the tips to win in this market uh, before I started, um, I want, I'm going to just introduce myself really quickly. My name is Giovanna. Uh, the, the one you can see, it's my colleague Ludo. Would you like to introduce yourself, Ludo? Sure, why not? Um, my name is Ludo, indeed. Um, <laughs> I am, so the, of course, the webinar today is a little bit tailored towards <laughs> the Eindhoven region. I myself am responsible for the Amsterdam region. So if people are still doubting um, if they want to go to Eindhoven or more towards Amsterdam, um, you're at the right address because uh, well, both of us will be able to assist you. Um, indeed, I'll be helping out with the Q&A today with the chat. So if there's anything uh, while Giovanna is doing the presentation, just reach out to me and um, let's make it a good one. Uh, feel free to interrupt me if you think I, uh, I forgot thing or if you have any good information for us as well. <laughs> dream work. <laughs> <laughs> so I am Giovanna. I'm here in Eindhoven. I live in the city center. I've been in the Netherlands for about 13 years. It's going to be 14, I believe. I lost count of the years already. Um, I'm from Brazil. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm in this country for a while. I have red houses and apartments, uh, bought a house, sold a house, bought another one, renovated both of them. And uh, maybe in the future, renovate another one and buy another one. Let's see how it goes, how the market goes. Um, yeah, let's continue the presentation. Greatness is achieved in the agents of others. Uh, a brief introduction of our company. We have introduced ourselves and uh, we want to tell that we are not traditional real estate agents. Uh, we help with buying and renting as well. And many regions uh, uh, of the Netherlands, we have a fixed fee. Uh, so we don't charge a percentage. It doesn't matter how much you're going to pay for the house. If it's 150K, and I hope you're lucky enough to find one like that. Or if it's three, five, millions the price is the same for everyone uh we know what it's like to settle in a new country yes indeed we do uh, we are all expats or have uh, international experience so uh, we know the feeling of being uh our home away from home uh, i would say um and uh what we can add value how we add value of course uh, uh working with you. So um, selling agents do take offers more serious from agents, of course, from h and because we know what we're doing. We've been working with that for quite a while. Uh, um, and then they also know that we do uh, know the background of our clients. We know uh, uh, the mortgage power. We know all the information they need to know to have a secure deal. Um, we can sometimes book viewings when it's no longer possible. That's true. A lot of agencies, they do uh, save some viewings, some spots, uh, 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 for agents because they know we're going to call asking anyway. Uh, sometimes they even offer to us even before they put it out there. Uh, so that's something that helps uh, a lot. Uh, we support by reviewing Dutch legal and property documents. We, most of us in the company do speak Dutch. Uh, uh, so if you are there thinking about how did you guys learn that language, don't lose hope. Is it possible? It's not the best one, but it is possible. <laughs> uh, we help define market value, and that's something very, very uh, important. And we, I'm going to explain uh, uh, a bit, a little bit further about it. What is the market value, and what is the difference from the whole overbidding and everything? So we do help you define that to have the best deal. 
and you will inform me about rules and regulations. And that's something very important, especially uh, uh, this year. A lot of the regulations, uh, rules have, uh, um, they're new and they change and it uh, makes a really uh, big difference for us expects when we buy a house and we intend to rent or sell in the future, that makes a big difference now. Uh, it did before, but now it's a bit more complicated. So we have to, to talk about that. Um, we make sure uh, you don't make the same mistakes we did because of course we have uh, 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 rushed into stuff uh, before working in this business and did something uh, things that we, I wouldn't say regretted, but it could have done better. I, for instance, bought a house, a very old one, uh, without a technical inspection. So um, yeah, look, so that's something we advise you not to do it. And uh, we're going to advise you uh, 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 and all the process, what are, uh, uh, the do's and no do's from the whole don't the, uh, the whole process. So you have the best. You are very secure on the whole buying process. Let's move move further. I have some market info for you. Um, some numbers. The average price uh, uh, in Q two uh, it was four four eight uh, um, uh, in the whole uh, Netherlands. So that's uh, that's quite high and still going up. Although. Uh, a whole uh, a war is going on and interest rates are rising up. Uh, that's what is, uh, it's still the price are still going up. Uh, here are some information about Eindhoven. Uh, uh, house sold last year, uh, 1,545. Uh, again, you're going to receive this presentation so you can go to each of the slides uh, uh, more easily and, and read them all. We, we also put some links where you can click and read more deep into the whole information. Uh, house for sale, uh, 1,038. Uh, less, of course, less house than last year, but we all know that the market is quite complicated. There are not enough houses uh, uh, in the market for everyone to buy, so that makes it a bit difficult. Average price, really high, uh, 457 uh, uh, for the Eindhoven region. Um, Really, I've been here for 13 years. This is insane. Um, I, I think when I bought my first house, it was the average was about 312 or something. So it was just, this is really insane. Uh, the average price, it's quite high as well. Um, yeah, sales times 21 days. And I, I even uh, dare to say it, it's probably less than that because this is when people upgrade uh, Funda and all the other uh, uh, programs they have to. And all, that also takes a, a few days. So um, the market is uh, it's still going very hard. So just for you to have an idea. Market drivers, uh, what caused the price to increase? Uh, fiscal benefits, you probably all heard about the tax exceptions. Uh, interest rebate, you can have uh, uh, no capital gains, tax-free parent donation. And uh, did it end already, Ludo? No, not yet. So actually, okay. there, there's currently a tax-free um, parent donation. Well, it's always called a parent donation, but actually it's from any family member. Any family currently, member, yeah. Currently um, at 100,000 euros. Next year, it will be lowered to, I think, 33,000 euros. Mm -hmm. And uh, from starting from 2024, there is no um, tax-free uh, donation possible from a family member. Thank you. There you go. So if you if your parents want to donate some money for you to buy a house, this is the time. There is no tax for now. Uh, so uh, go for it. Um, lower interest rates. Uh, and we're going to talk about this a bit uh, uh, up front. Uh, although the interest rates are getting higher, they are still low compared to, uh, uh, I don't know, 2013, 2014, 2015. So they're still very low uh, comparing to that. Uh, and high rents, the rent increased quite a lot. I believe today I got an information that um, uh, in the whole Netherlands, it was about 3.2% or so, uh, that the rents increase, of course, some place a bit more, some place a bit less, So, which is quite high. So uh, um, it is still very good uh, uh, to buy a house. Uh, and lack of supply, of course market uh, uh, we all know about this there's too many people not enough houses and that makes the competition very very high um, here are the rules and and some interest you can click on those links you're going to receive again via email you can click on the links and and read a little bit more about it there is a very important one that changed on the first of uh, april in uh, eindhoven region uh, some other regions it changed before that and some other regions uh, still it will change but in eindhoven region and i can say that for Veldhoven, Geldrop, 
Noon and Best um, Vulcan's Varied, but I'm not Helmond yet. Uh, so if you buy a house and you, you, you intend to rent it, yeah, you want to have a mortgage by to let, for example, it has to be a house uh, uh, of the WOZ value up to 350. If it's higher than that, you're not allowed to have a buy to let mortgage. So you cannot buy and then rent the house, uh, have a, a, a rental mortgage, I would say a let mortgage. So, um, and there are also uh, other rules regarding uh, uh, that you buy the house and you do have to live in the Eindhoven region. You have to live at least, I believe it was four or five, uh, four years. No, we have to, uh, don't remember anymore if it's four or five years uh, in the house. To be and after that you are able to uh, rent the house so you can click on the link and you can read everything about the rental uh, self occupancy obligation before you rent the house so uh, just for you to be aware because i have a lot of questions from uh, expats there are they, they want to know if they can rent uh, uh, the house afterwards it is it's possible but there are uh, the rules are more strict now so uh, be aware of that and you, of course you always need permissions from the city hall uh, there are a lot of exceptions as well, um, um, and in that link, you pro you're going to find the link of the city hall where uh, there is a PDF file explaining all the rules. So it's quite uh, uh, it's quite good to, to to read it if you are thinking about renting the house in a short term. Uh, Twenty percent in the house price, uh, February two thousand two. We have a, a little bit of information over there uh, uh, um, um, uh, for you. The price are still. Um, um, getting uh, high uh, owner occupied homes have increased by 20.2 percent in february uh yeah uh, again uh, uh, the price are still increasing so a little bit uh, um, not so fast how it was uh, last year or the year before but they are still increasing uh interest rates have rise yeah we all saw that uh, i had clients who bought houses for 1.2 percent uh used interest rates for 1.2 percent and uh, which was quite good uh, uh yeah but since the war and everything uh the interest rates went quite high uh double that the war before uh, even a little bit higher still and uh, what we see in the market is that uh, there are, um, although the prices are still going, uh, the houses are still getting uh, more and more expensive, the craziness about overbidding is a bit less at the moment. I'm not saying you're not going to have to do, but it is uh, a little bit less. Uh, what we see is that the, 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 the owners are looking for more secure when they're selling the house not, and not just making a lot of money. So then that is giving a lot of people the chance to buy a house and not going through the whole crazy process of overbidding insanely amount of money. Uh, you can read a bit uh, of that there as well. Oh, I have to click it, there you go. What would you need in savings before you uh, start? So we have uh, uh, a little bit of an explanation for you. I will, put, uh, I will go through them to explain uh, uh, everything, but uh, one of the things that you need to pay attention is that always think about three to 5% in cash uh, to be able to buy a house in the Netherlands. Uh, the bank will only finance the value, the market value of the house given by an appraisal. Nothing uh, more than that. So you need to pay the transfer taxes if you are older than 35, uh, or if you buy a house that is uh, up to uh, uh, expensive than 400K. So then you have to pay 2% uh, transfer taxes. Or if you, even if you are younger than 35, but you already bought a house before, this, this is, you can only use that uh, uh, exception once. So even if you are younger than 35, the house is uh, less than 400K, but you bought a house before, you're not gonna be able to use the 2% uh, the, the, the discount, let's say, uh, again. So it's only once. Uh, so that's why I always tell, keep in mind three to 5%, uh, uh, and that included uh, the, the notary, that will be the mortgage deed and transfer deed, that's mandatory, you have, they have to make uh, the transfer deed and mortgage deed for you. Uh, the bank or the mortgage advisor and that uh, there is, of course, you can choose uh, your uh, uh, which uh, person you'd like to work with. So the price is also different uh, difference uh, in prices. Uh, typical real estate agent normally charges one to two percent. I did see in Eindhoven two and a half percent, two point eight percent. So be aware of that. And as we said before, we charge a fixed fee. 
And also you can see everything that is tax deductible. Uh, an appraisal as well, it is mandatory uh, to have an appraisal for the house. You need to show the bank the real market value. We're gonna talk about this a little bit further. Technical inspections, uh, inspector is up to you, but we always advise uh, uh, on that. I'm also gonna explain that a little bit later. An interpreter is mandatory if you don't speak fluently Dutch. Uh, that's the law, so you're gonna have to to, to choose one. Uh, bank guarantee. That's the ten percent that you have to pay. Uh, you have to transfer to the notary, and in case something happens, that will be defined that you have to pay to the sellers. You can always pay. You can also pay with your money. But if you use the bank's money, then there is a fee for that. And if you buy a house below three fifty five market value three fifty five, uh, then you are uh, able to get any HD mortgage, which is a mortgage that. Um, it's a bit more cheaper than the other, the normal mortgage, and also have some benefits such as if you lose your job or uh, if you're not able to work anymore because you'll, you'll suffer an accident or something like that, you'll be covered for a while. Um, you can have more information with your mortgage advisor about that special uh, uh, mortgage, but be aware that it is up to 355 uh, market value. Uh, and that you do have to pay a, a value of 0.6% of the purchase price to be able, you pay only once uh, to be able to use that. So all of this, it's about three to 5% of the purchase price uh, that you need to have in cash to be able to pay uh, a few days before you go to the notary to sign the mortgage deed and the transfer deed. Moving forward, uh, we put some three tips to win in the current market. Uh, value, of course, uh, and let me explain to you why. Uh, we have this property uh, asking price 395. Um, I suppose. There you go. Asking price 395, uh, market value 415. And purchase price was 435. So when we see, this is about the overbidding and what you can uh, uh, what you can borrow from the money as well. So let's say uh, um, here you can see asking price versus uh, purchase price. It's about uh, 10%. That's a, 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 a 40k that you have uh, overbid from the uh, funda value. I would say funda price. That's what everybody always tell you have to overbid around 10, 20 percent, or something like that. But after you get your offer accepted, you do need to send an appraisal to the house. And this is the difference. This is when we talked about market value, and when the overbidding is not always uh, true. That is a specific value that you have to do. So the asking price on funda. Remember, I'll even put it back so you can look at it again. This this was the asking price three nine five on funda and then the house were, was bought for 435 uh, market value this market value is when the appraiser went to the house and did a report to send the bank and told the bank that the apartment although you pay 435 is worth at 415 so this is a trick so you actually you actually did not overbid 10 percent you overbid for eight four point eight percent because uh, what it's worth it for the bank is the market value. So that's what they use to, to, uh, to as a mortgage. Uh, so the difference you do have to pay uh, in cash. So above those 5% they told you, if you overbid market value, you do have to pay the difference in cash because the bank only going to give you 415. Of course, if you have the budget, if you have a budget of 350, you're going to have to pay the whole difference, right? So, But that's what the, 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 the bank will give it to you. And that's what is market value. We do have one more. Asking price 375, market value 415, purchase price 435. You see, comparing to the asking price, the overbid was quite high, 16%. And I see, uh, I have seen people doing even 20%, but then the market value was super high. So it all the, the Funda price, the, what you see on Funda, the website, if you never saw Funda before, it's a website where you can see all the houses that are for sale in the net. Most of them, I would say 99%. Um, it's www.funda.nl. Um, so when you see uh, uh, the difference on, it, it really depends on the real estate that is the, the company who is selling the house, real estate agents that is selling the house. Some of them put it very low. Some of them put it very high. Some of them put the real value or just a little bit of a difference so they can work with it. It really depends. In Eindhoven, what I've seen for the past, I would say, two and a half, three years, is that the market value is around well, 20, 25K uh, uh, more uh, than the asking price. So just for you to have an idea, it's not a rule, but it's uh, it's more like uh, uh, what we what I have seen uh, with my other clients. So in this case, it is quite a big difference. You see, 375 market value is 415. Again, same purchase, 
but uh, 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 compared to Funda, it's very different, 16% to 48%. So when people say they uh, overbid, you have to know if did they overbid the market value or did they overbid that much on Funda value? So if they overbid 16% on market value, that will be way too much money for a property. I would say never buy it because you probably will not never ever uh, uh, or it will take you a long years to get the money back. But since this is uh, overbid, from the from the market value, um, then you can see that it's quite uh, it's not that bad. Just for you to have an idea. Here we're talking about number two winning offer. So first is to know about the market value. The second is a winning offer. How do you submit a winning offer? I'm not sure if all of you. We used to have a poll, didn't we? We don't have the poll anymore about the winning offer. Huh? No. Okay. Um, let me come back to this. Yeah, there you go. Uh, submit a winning offer. So always offer a good price, of course, based it on the, the market value. Not always the highest price is the winning price. And that's very important uh, because some people have no idea about what to put in the offer, what to write in the offer, what the clause they should put in the offer. I will give an example and I can come back to this. If in this house that the asking price was 375, if you make an offer or 435 and put it in the offer that you want to, it's 100% of that price, the 435, the people who are selling the house, they already know the market value. They know it's not going to be possible for you to finance 435 because the market value is 415. Do you understand that? I hope you do. If you don't, please ask your questions. Um, and remember, the bank only going to give you the market value gave, given by an appraiser. So the appraiser says 415, and you put it in your offer that you're going to purchase the house for 435, and you want to finance 100%. So we, they know that it's not going to be possible, that you can only finance 415. So which means that offer, it doesn't mean anything for them, because you're not going to get your mortgage approved, so it's not going to go, uh, um, it's not going to go further. Someone raised their hand. Um, can you put your question in the chat, please? Um, <clears throat> so that's the difference when you make a very good offer. So if I offer my 435 with 100% mortgage, in that case, I would never want the house and, and offer less with more security. But knowing that they can be, they'll be able to finance, they will win the offer. So you always have to pay attention on the clause. Uh, offer security to the seller. That's what they need because most of the seller are selling the house because they bought something else, and they also, if they don't get the mortgage, you don't get the mortgage approved. They won't be able to sell the house. They won't get their mortgage approved for the other house. So they want security, especially now with the interest rates that are getting higher and higher. That's the only thing they need: security. So remember that. Offer the less amount of hassle, of course. Uh, uh, don't. Um, I would say don't. Uh, put too many, uh, um, how can I say, specifics in your offer? No, but it don't, don't make it difficult for the seller to choose you uh, uh, because of course the, uh, the market is very competitive and then they're gonna have uh, uh, other people with an easy way uh, uh, to do the, the whole business and they're gonna choose for someone else. Offer a personal touch. It's very nice to talk about yourself a little bit. <clears throat> Sorry, where do you work? What kind of contract you have that you have spoke you already spoke with the market advisor those kind of little things that it makes them like you a lot of people are very sentimental about the house especially when they live in the house for so long so that's something you can ask when you are in the viewing how long do the people live here if they live for a long time they're very very uh, emotional about it and they might choose people that will take care more of the house or the have the same lifestyle those kind of things so that will be nice for you to pay attention to that as well uh, due diligence. So here are the people that I talked to you before. Uh, uh, technical inspector, uh, that's uh, the guy who will come and inspect the building itself. Not, uh, he's not going to see that if the kitchen is working, if the bathroom is working, he's going to inspect the building. So um, uh, uh, the house I live uh, today, for example, is a house from 1906. So if you are buying a house that is very old and it has never been renovated before, or the last renovation was like, 30 years ago or something, then we very much advise you to do an inspection. I have a technical inspection you offer. If the house is around 20 years, that's fine. You probably don't need one because it's too, it's 
really a new house for uh, the Dutch market. So um, uh, good materials and everything. So you probably won't find anything uh, on the inspection. Of course, it's always up to you, but remember the hassle and the difficulties for the, the, the seller to choose you. So that's where you have to think and uh, ask all the questions in the viewing to make those decisions. An appraisal is always mandatory to have one uh, if you need a mortgage. If you don't, uh, it's not mandatory. If you're gonna pay in cash, of course, it is no, there's no need, but an appraiser is the one who's going to come to the house after you get an offer inspection uh, accepted and you will tell um, you, your mortgage advisor or the bank, how much uh, the house is worth it. And with that report, it's gonna make a report. Uh, the bank will see how much uh, uh, the house is worth it and how much they, uh, and then uh, if you have the budget, of course, that's the, how much they're gonna give you as a mortgage. Uh, do you book them? I always answer before. Do you book them before or after your offer is accepted? It's after, it's always after your offer gets accepted. We did a little, uh, you can see a little uh, um, um, chart here. So uh, um, uh, we, we like a little timeline uh, when that happened. So offer gets accepted. You have one and a half weeks more or less to sign the purchase agreement. And that's your offer gets accepted. You see the sweet spot. That's more or less when you uh, call the technical inspector and the appraisal to be sure that uh, they are in the house before you sign the purchase agreement. So then you know the real market value. Your, uh, uh, you have the report from the technical inspector that nothing is wrong with the house. If something is wrong, you can try to negotiate it with the seller. But keep in mind that in this market, a lot of people are okay doing renovation, even big ones. And to be honest, I love them all. I would love to do renovation all the time. So uh, there are a lot of crazy people like me out there. So uh, pay attention that you are not too picky on the details on the technical inspection. Uh, uh, and also that the technical inspector will inspect the building itself, not uh, little things such as oven, or dishwasher, those kind of things. We put up together a big timeline to understand the process, the buying process. So you start to search. Uh, Funda is the most common website for to find your home. Uh, always um, subscribe yourself to the to the uh, real estate in area uh, because sometimes, uh, a lot of times actually, they do put their houses on the website a day or two before Funda, and then you get a notification or you get a, an email saying that we have a new house it's going to be on Funda in two days, but you can already apply. To do the viewings, I'm not. I'm not saying you're going to see the house first, but you get a spot before everyone else, so uh, to be able to see the house. So uh, subscribe to those companies. Uh, I do have a little list saved. Uh, so if you don't know them, please send me. Uh, since you're going to receive this presentation, you can see my email. Send me an email. I can I can send you the list if you like. Um, I, I did it for myself, so um, yeah, I can. I don't mind to share that. Um, you swim, then you go to the house. You see the house. You like it a lot. You do. You you, you see. Uh, you ask all your questions uh, about the state of the house. When is the moving date uh, and everything. And then you make your offer. You send your offer. You submit it. And within a few hours, maybe a day or two max, you're gonna get a response. Uh, and then. And it's time for you to book the appraiser technical inspection. Remember the spots we talked about it? Um, after one and a half week, after the offer gets accepted, things move quite quickly. After one and a half week, uh, one and a half week max, I would say like two, two weeks max, 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 you do have to sign the purchase agreement. The purchase agreement is the agreement between you and the seller saying that you bought the house for that amount and all the clause that you bought in your offer, or maybe he had some special clause as well that is going to be in the contract. So be aware of that. So that will be in, this, in the purchase agreement. And you do need this purchase agreement to be able to get a mortgage, of course. Um, and then you sign the purchase agreement. You do have after the signing, after signing the purchase agreement, you have three days, we call them cool off period, to get out of the deal without paying any penalties. After that, you do have to pay 10%. Remember the bank guarantee, we talked about it in the big uh, uh, overview of all the costs. That's what you have to pay to the seller after those three days, if you get out of your deal. Uh, for some reason, maybe you didn't like, I don't know, you didn't like the house anymore, but that's not possible. You can only get out of the deal if you put the financial clause in your offer and your offer gets denied. But otherwise, you have to pay 10% to the seller. Of course, there are exceptions. Every case is a case, but this is the common one, the general one. So be aware of that. So you have three days, three working days. So my advice to you, don't sign your contracts uh, on Monday and Tuesday. Always sign Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So then you have you know, 
you, the, the weekend doesn't count. So if you sign on Wednesday, you have until Monday evening to get out of the deal, or then Thursday is Tuesday and Wednesday is when, uh, Friday is Wednesday. So then you have a bit more time. No, right? Yeah. Then you have a bit more time to, <laughs> to, to, if you have any doubts, uh, to think about it, those three working days. And then you, you pay no uh, fine to the seller. You do gonna have to pay if you had an appraisal and a technical inspector needed, you're gonna have to pay them both, of course. And that's not, they're not gonna reimburse you because they have been in the house for you already. Just keep that in mind. Um, oh, the cool off period came now. So that's the cool off period you signed the contract. Uh, um, uh, your mortgage process will start it uh, after you sign the purchase agreement and have the appraisal report in hand. You send to your mortgage advisor or the bank and they will start the mortgage process. We put it here an average of four weeks because that's normally what it takes. Uh, but lately we see that it's taking a bit more longer for them to approve the mortgage, not because there is a problem with the mortgage, it is a shortness of people really, and the amount of people they are uh, buying is also quite high, uh, they don't have that many people to work, and it's getting a little bit more, uh, and they get a little bit more picky, I would say, the banks uh, regarding the mortgage, because the interest rates went up, of course, they have to recalculate stuff, so uh, be aware of that, but the average is still four weeks, but it might be taking a bit longer, um, or even I even have clients who approve their mortgage in a week, a week and a half. So that's also possible. So after your mortgage application is uh, approved, there's not much you can do. You have to wait until the, 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 the transfer date. In the meantime, you will uh, receive a statement of completion. That's an invoice, uh, a final note, an invoice from the notary. We all those costs, remember those costs, uh, the three to 5% that I talked uh, about it. This is the time where you pay them. You transfer the money to the bank, uh, or you transfer the money if you overbid uh, market value above the market value, you have to transfer that money as well. So this is a time where you pay those um, those bills. That that bill, the the, the appraiser, it depends on the appraiser. You can pay them also in that invoice, but most of them like to receive after they are done with the work. So in that one and a half week after you get a mortgage accepted mortgage accepted, um, uh, offer accepted, and the technical inspector, uh, you have to pay after a day or two they've been in the house. Um, so this is where you get the statement completion, this is where you get your invoice. And then uh, on the day, uh, let's say we are at the September, so let's say you bought a house and you're going to move in on the 2nd of February, for example. So this is a day, inspection, transfer deed, and key handover. So you go, first you go to the house, uh, let's say the notary is at 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, depends how far the house, of course, but norm normally it's an hour, 45 minutes early uh, from before the notary, you go to the house with your agent, uh, if you don't have to go any going alone, of course, um, with the selling agent, with the sellers, and then you do a last inspection, an inspection in the house. The house has to be in the same state as it was when you bought the house, when you send the offer and the offer get accept got accepted, when the you signed the purchase agreement, basically. So they can't do anything. They can't break any walls. They can't, the, uh, uh, anything they would do to the house, they do have to inform uh, you, your, your agent as well, and uh, you have to come into agreement, of course. If in the meantime, something is broken in the house, they do have to fix it. So that's something, unless it was some kind of specifics when you send the offer and the offer gets accepted, which I believe it won't, it won't be any. Uh, but I did have a case uh, before, for example, oh, the, the freezer is broken when they saw the house already and they knew that nobody would fix it. So that, that's something that in the inspection, it was in the last inspection, it was in the report, Fro uh, freezer is broken and the sellers uh, and the, buy the buyers knew since the beginning. So then there's no need for fixing, but that's what I mean. If something, uh, 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 they have to fix it before uh, you get the keys. And that's why you do the last inspection. If everything is working, if the hot water is working, and also to take photos of the meters, water, gas, electricity, um, because they're going to be transferred to your name from that day on, it's your responsibility. From that day on, they're going to have house insurance as well, the notary will ask, the, the selling part will ask in the inspection as well. And then you go to the notary after you're done with the inspection, you all signed the, the report, you go to the notary, and then it's time for you to uh, sign the transfer deed and the mortgage deed. Um, it takes about 45 minutes, you're going to have your translator there with you, you can ask all the questions you like, uh, it's your time, take your time, enjoy that time. Uh, uh, it is quite nice. Uh, uh, um, 
So do that. And then after that, uh, well, not after that, actually, immediately, what the, that's when the house is yours, uh, legally yours. Uh, it's your responsibility. So that's why they ask you about the, how, the home insurance, because if it gets on fire or something, that's already your responsibility, even though you didn't move in. Um, you have about two months uh, liability terms. Um, I would I want to point, point it out here that this is a very, very gray zone. You have uh, sellers and sellers. You have very nice people who, if you, let's say you move two days after and you turn on a radiator and it didn't work. Uh, and then you call the seller and you say, well, the radiator didn't work. Uh, it's not working. Um, you have very nice sellers who will come and look at it or say it was working before or uh, most of the time it's literally just air in the pipes, but uh, it will come and take a look and you have people that won't talk to you whatsoever. Um, and that's, that's, that's why it's nice to have an agent, but there are, uh, if the longer it takes, uh, the difficult becomes. That's as simple as it is. Um, so I always, we always advise our clients um, to turn it on everything Use the oven, use the dishwasher, use everything, all the, the, the everything you can, uh, all the radiators and everything to make sure that everything is working, that in like in a month, you don't have any problems because it's, it, they can say you already use it. So there's no more responsibility anymore. Your house is yours. And that's why we always call it is a very gray zone. There are no laws that protect you or protect the seller. So it is is a difficult, every case is going to be a case. So just for you to understand. Um, let's move further. <clears throat> Those are the two packages we offer in our company. Uh, if you click on one of them, you can book an intake with us. It is free. Uh, I can um, explain them to you and you can choose the region as well. And then you get all my other colleagues who are very, very nice. Uh, feel free to do so. And I think, let me see. Um, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> again, for you to click it if you have uh, interest in talk to us. Um, did I forget any information? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think that was it. Uh, um, uh, yeah, no, I think that was it, definitely. Ludo, I, it's your time. <laughs> it's a turn. Yes, indeed. So in the meanwhile, I've been uh, answering some questions here and there. Um, if there are still some questions left, then please pop them in the Q&A. We can uh, answer them live. Um, I already have a question from Ruben. I'm buying a house, turning it into a student house, meaning I would be living in it and renting it to other students. So renting out uh, a room or multiple rooms. Is it possible since you mentioned that you must live in the property for four years before renting it out? Uh, there are there there is a specific rule for um, for renting out rooms um, in in the website of the city hall. You do you can see about their rule specific, and every city has a different one. Um, let me see if I remember about the specific rule about renting the room. I think it was it was possible. Um, you do have to see about also about square meters and people register there. That's something different um, um, that you have to do. You do have to see about the city hall and see uh, about the possibilities of it. Yeah, so what is good to know also, sorry, in the meantime, I'm putting uh, my charger in my computer. <laughs> um, what is good to know, when renting out a part of your house, uh, one room, two room, three rooms, whatever, if you're renting out part of your house, you don't necessarily need permission from the bank. Uh, whereas if you're renting out your whole house, definitely the bank needs to know. Um, there are no fiscal benefits when you're renting out the room, only uh, yep. when you're renting out your whole house. And um, when you are renting out part of your room, have very clear agreements with your roommates um, about yeah, who stays in charge and for how long they can rent because um, tenants get tenant rights very easily in the Netherlands. Um, yeah. And once they have tenant rights, it's pretty much impossible to kick them out. Um, and if at one point you want to move out, sell your house and your tenants are being difficult and saying, no, I have tenant rights now, I don't wanna stay. Yeah, technically speaking, you, you can't kick them out. And um, a house is worth a lot less when there are tenants inside. Mm -hmm. So that is something to keep in mind. But it is it is allowed, indeed. And then also the four-year um, self-habitation uh, uh, obligation is not applicable. It, it's funny that you... Yourself. 
Thank you. It's funny that you talk about the, 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 the tenant uh, rights because I did have a client once uh, that we, he was an investor and he wants to buy an apartment and we went to see this apartment and on, fund, on, the, on the fund website, it was already an apartment with a tenant. You had to buy with that tenant. You couldn't kick him out. And we did bought the apartment though with the tenant, <laughs> with a co we just the contract just was uh, we, we just changed the, the rental contract to my client's name the the, the the new owner of the apartment but that's that's how uh, tenants gets uh, the, how the rights are very very uh, um, uh, the tenants are very protected so just for you again to understand uh, what Ludo says is indeed very important that you have very uh, the rules are very clarified for uh, both parties because it might give you a headache to, to, to sort that out. Indeed. Cool. Okay. Um, well, question I think that's, that's very good for you, Giovanna, from Maxi uh, Maxime. How easy is it to renovate a house timeline wise, finding a work? Ooh, timeline. Timeline. Well, it depends. Huh? Um, easily, I, I think it's not easy. Not easy at all. Uh, it depends. Also, if you buy a very old house, it's very difficult. Uh, but it is so nice. You find stuff <laughs> behind the walls that are amazing. I really, I loved it. Every single, uh, not every single part of the process because I want to kill people more than I love them. But, uh, but that's how it is, right? Uh, you have always have surprises. I, I would say always. Think about your budget and 10 or 15 percent more because things will come up and they they can they can't see it when they give you a, a, a price at the beginning and then you're gonna have to pay for it i think the, the it's not uh, it's not that hard to renovate the house you can do a lot of you can buy a lot of things by yourself um yeah, also, I do like to do that myself as well. So I did that uh, a lot. Uh, I think th these days, the, the, the difficulty is to find someone to renovate your house. Uh, and that's something difficult. Um, I, I would suggest you to always talk to someone that already did renovation so they can give you some names because uh, just Googling, it can be not just very uh, risky and find someone that is not good enough, but also much more expensive they, um, um, than, than finding uh, a contractor that already uh, did something for someone that you know or know they know someone, you know, that that would be uh, my advice. I don't think it's that hard. You just have to be patient. And it depends on the renovation, right? Uh, if you have one person working and you want to renovate a three-story house, that's going to take a while. Uh, but if you have four or five people, uh, but I would say no less than four months, three and a half, four months, and it's already quite uh, um, uh, fast. And um, it depends on the time of the year. When I did, for example, my first house it started on the 4th of January. Um, and then after a week, it was snowing for a week. And we had to, we broke half of the house and rebuilt everything to make a, 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 a bigger space. And that was not very, uh, uh, the weather did not collaborate that much because it was too cold. They couldn't be outside for that long. And that took more time than we expected. Um, so those kind of those little things you have to to and I, I would say also get offers don't go to the first person uh, because we we talked to three different people and we decided which one is our match uh, because um, um, I think if you are paying you have you make the decision and that was something for me difficult at the first house because they want to make the decision themselves uh, based on what they think was best and I had to keep remind them that I was the one paying and I didn't care if it looked bad or not or look ugly or not or 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 whatever so that that was the thing by the way it didn't look ugly at all <laughs> but uh, that was so I found uh, at the second house I found someone that was like a click he knew what I needed and 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 he understood that I would take um that I would be very clear in the things that I wanted to buy and I bought it and the only thing uh, we did everything together. So I think that was, and there was a planning. Planning, it was very important to have a planning. Um, we kept the planning. We sat once a week to discuss and see, because of course, if you live in a rental place, you need also to 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 try to figure it out how that goes. So yeah, I, I don't think it's that difficult, but it is, uh, I don't know where, uh, it is very expensive in this country to renovate a house. Be aware of that. Um, and there are rules as well. If you depends on what you do in the house, there are rules, uh, specific rules. Uh, so you have to check those as well. Thank you.
Perfect. Cool. I have a, a question from Jossi. Um, assuming both options are possible, do you have a suggestion on whether or not to buy a property together with your partner when it comes to getting tax exemptions, for example? Well, I think it depends on the partner, right? I mean, <laughs> if you are, I guess, if you have, you can, if you can buy with someone, you have a higher budget. If you can combine the budgets, and you can, uh, um, and normally you buy 50-50. Um, um, I had clients that were just friends, but they were really good friends, and they decided to buy an apartment together. They did make a document uh, that uh, um, that they were friends, and then if something happens, this and this and that, they made a document at the notary about it to make it clear that nobody, you know, would just stop paying a mortgage and or they get a fight or something, and they, they would show up or, or or you know that they had to. Uh, that everyone had the rights uh, and uh, they, because they, they were able to get a higher budget, a better college apartment, a better neighborhood. So we, I had a quite a few clients actually, they were just colleagues actually, good friends from the past. I had cousins before as well, they bought together, but they all made this document. And then of course the husband and his wife, if you are legally married, you actually don't need it, uh, uh, that document. But then uh, if you have a partner, I think it's very clear to, it's very, uh, um, safe uh, to leave to, to put everything le uh, um, that uh, left yeah, everything uh, in yeah yeah everything in writing just for uh, for both of you right uh, you never know what the future uh, will bring so the future will bring so then every uh, the both of you know the rules and know all the the, the, the regulations and and uh, and how it goes with the whole process you can always have apartment by by yourself as well huh? uh, same the same is the same thing as long as you put all in the paper it's okay. What is good to know is regarding tax exemptions. There's oh, yeah, really the tax only, exemption, sorry. Yeah, but well, there's only one tax exemption, uh, or everyone has probably heard of the transfer tax. There is a transfer tax exemption. Um, if you are under 35 years old, buying under 400k and using the exemption for the first time, um, then you are um, exempt from paying the transfer tax. Yeah. Um, if you're buying with a partner, uh, technically speaking, you're buying 50% of the property and the, your other, or your partner is buying the other 50%. If one is, let's say, 37 and the other is 34, one person can use the exemption on his or her 50% share. Um, the other can't, coming to a total of 1% transfer. 1%. In that sense, yeah. there is a benefit in the tax exemption if um, your partner is under 35. And um, yeah, it might be nicer to buy with that person because you pay one percent transfer tax less. Um, I, I had I had that actually with those with that with that uh, that were the friends who bought the apartment and only one of them had one percent. Uh, had I was under thirty five, and then at the note uh, the note uh, the notary, um, because everything was on paper, uh, they didn't share the the the, the last invoice. Uh, one pay a little bit more and the other one paid a little, bit, a little bit less because he had the tax ex exemptions of 1%. So that's something you can also think about it. Okay, um, question from Ruben. Do you guys think there will be a crash in the economy with the high interest rates causing cheaper um, housing in the next few years? Uh, to be honest, a crash, I don't think so. Uh, I was, I arrived in this country when, in 2009 at the beginning of the crisis, and that was very ugly uh, regarding house uh, market. Um, um, I don't think the, the government will let come to that, but also there are uh, not enough houses. Uh, I think that's the biggest problem. Uh, even if the, uh, the, the, the interest rates are still going high, if the rent doesn't go down, People have to live somewhere. They're not going to stop buying. They have to buy or rent something. People can't pay rent anymore because it's really, really expensive and it's still good to buy. Uh, um, and one thing I, I keep telling people is that although the interest rates are going up, they are still quite low. It was just that it was too low before, too, too low. The economy wouldn't be able to hold on to that. Um, and, and that's something people have to understand. Uh, what we see is uh, uh, the market is slowing down, I would say. The price that is still going up is just slowly, but you still have a lot of people buying. And what you have, it's more security when you're going to buy the house. Uh, again, about the overbeating, it's much less than it was before. People are more, they want to more be on the safe side. Because, because not just because of that, because a lot of people who were selling their houses, they were they got afraid because interest rate going up and they don't want to sell it anymore. 
so it's it's even less houses. So uh, it, it, that's the big issue. Uh, go, the price is going down, like insanely down. No, I, I don't believe uh, that would happen anytime. So we don't see any that much uh, um, buzzing about that at all. What do you think, Ludo? Yeah, I don't expect a, a big crash, to be honest, either. It depends a little bit where you're looking, right? If you're looking in the city center to, to um, look at the area that I am focused on, if you look in the city center of Amsterdam, but yeah. pretty much the same in, in Eindhoven. Um, at one point, it's full, right? You can't build more and more when yeah. the city has been fully built already. So um, the majority of the people, especially in the Netherlands, want to live in these, um, in these yeah. hubs, the bigger cities. So um, if the demand is still uh, high enough and the supply is still on the lower side, then prices are not going to crash. Yeah. Uh, indeed, with the more or with the interest rates um, rising now, budgets are going down a bit because of this. We see that people's budgets are shifting, um, and uh, well, the more expensive houses are uh, they're taking a little bit more time to to sell. Um, selling agents are. Uh, listing a little bit more towards their market value so we, we see a shift happening but a crash i don't, I don't see. yeah i don't believe so too yeah see. okay um cool i have a question from an anonymous attendee what is the ratio uh, of buyers versus sellers uh, as of today in eindhoven and will this be balanced out um, and is there currently is the bargaining power currently of the seller higher compared to the buyer yeah i would say I would say yes, yeah, because again, not enough houses. They always have, uh, they always have the power. Really, uh, uh, the difference is that they want more safe, uh, be on the safe side. They don't want to wait for the highest, highest, uh, incredible amount of money. Uh, they want security. They want someone that knows uh, where the money comes from. If they're gonna have the mortgage approved, because they also gonna buy something, or they already bought something, uh, and that's the biggest. Uh, uh, that's the biggest, the only biggest difference that I see. But uh, regarding set, what, uh, uh, regarding uh, who has the power, definitely the seller, uh, because yeah, not enough houses. And uh, as you guys see, I know we keep getting people. We uh, the expats keep coming. There are many many jobs out there still, many many jobs. So um, yeah, definitely the seller. Yeah, indeed, the bargaining power of the seller is is high. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, they are currently doing the municipalities are doing their utmost best to to create more houses because there is definitely a lack of, of uh, supply um but as long as the supply is lower than the demand uh, demands, the yeah. power of the seller is going to be higher yeah the expectancy is to the balance out a bit but and i'm hoping it's quite small as well compared to all the big cities so that makes a bit more difficult yeah exactly okay um question from dina i saw the energy rating between A to F, the energy label. What is the range of utility uh, bills between A and F? Um, example given is an energy property with an energy label F. Does the are, are the utility payments double of an A, maybe even triple? Do you know that by any chance? Um, no, I don't know that. What I do know is that of course depends how much how many people live in the property because you can have an energy label uh, C, D, and F, but if you live alone. Uh, and you have an, a house that has an energy, energy label B, for example, but with five people, uh, you're going to end up more, uh, going to pay more anyway. Uh, the difference is that how the house uh, holds the heat inside, uh, and how how good is the insulation, right? So it really depends, but it can be big. Uh, of course, if you have a house that energy label is A, um, I wouldn't dare to say the difference how much, but in in in, in money figures, but it is very big. Uh, um, um, Oh, I do. I can give my example. I have an energy label C, and my neighbor has an energy label E. E, yeah, indeed E. And uh, I think he pays around two. Uh, it was two hundred something, almost three hundred more than I do. Uh, 
But the difference, for example, he has part of his house has double glazed. I have completely uh, double glazed the, the house. Um, I have floor heating. He doesn't have any floor insulation. Uh, um, yeah, that those are the, the difference that you can compare. But yeah, it can be very high, but it also can depend on the amount of people that live in the house. If you have, live alone in, in a small apartment in the city center that is energy label F, I don't believe you're gonna pay that much of a difference or what people that live in an energy label B with five people. Um, so that's 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 also the balancing. And oh, and one more thing. Oh, if it's a house, uh, it doesn't. It, you uh, when you, for example, when you book a viewing, make sure that they have a new energy label report or it was not done. I don't know twenty years ago because the the report. Uh, can, uh, uh, in the past could last for many, many years. So, uh, and they, they are only obligated to do a new energy labor report. Uh, uh, they have until the day you get your keys at the notary. Um, so um, uh, my house was like that. The energy label was really old one. It didn't, uh, in the meantime, and I can tell you by now, we did plenty of renovation. We insulated stuff. We put everything, we put solar panels and I didn't do a new energy label report because it cost about 800 euros. So you see, that's also the difference. They only, if I sell the house, I'm obligated to do it, but I can only, I can deliver the report only when people go to the notary. It doesn't mean, uh, that the energy label you see is the correct one. So if you book a view, you can always ask, did they already do the energy label report and, and check that, for example. Yeah. Thank you. Um, another question for Maxine. How much difference does the energy label actually make in the house value? Um, ooh, it, um, it depends, again, in the neighborhood. Um, it depends on the neighborhood as well. Huh? Uh, if you have... Uh, it, um, the house value, mm, it really depends. It, it depends on the neighborhood. It depends on the location. If they didn't do, if they don't have a good energy label, but they have this amazing bathroom, an amazing kitchen, an amazing backyard, that makes a huge difference as well. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't mean that they're going to have this higher power of value, value just because they have a better energy label. It's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, um, uh, it's a lot of things that make the value complete, not just in it left, you know, a good energy label. I have, I know uh, people who bought house, a house, I know a couple who uh, we helped, they bought a house in Merhoven, for example, and uh, the energy label was uh, B, yeah, B plus, something like that. And the house looks really awful inside. They had to renovate everything uh, because it was not taken care at all. The bathroom was terrible. Everything was terrible, really. But they wanted to do renovation, crazy people like me. Uh, but you see the energy label was B. Uh, 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 probably was a very old one. It could be even better, maybe. So, and, uh, so the appraiser, he goes to the house and he goes inside the house. He sees the house and he sees the bathroom. He sees the nice kitchen. He sees if there is floor heating. He sees if there is a noise floor. He sees everything. So it's not just the energy label. But of course, houses with energy label, higher energy label uh, uh, are very wanted by, especially by internationals. Yeah, the, the bills are expensive though, and you want to be protected from the cold. So, uh, yeah. I hope that answers. Yeah, it your also depends, um, depends a bit on the market, of course. If you have a very yeah. overheated market where the competition is huge, yeah, then people don't really look at an energy label anymore um, because they just want to want to just own a house, definitely. And you yeah. have neighborhoods that are very famous, for example, and people don't, uh, they will pay anything and the value will be high just because the other house around were sold very high as well. So it doesn't really make a difference, you see, uh, uh, on having uh, an amazing energy label. Um, my, my neighbor would sell his house in a blink of an eye. Uh, people would love to buy their house, old house, super nice, super stylish. So you see, an energy, energy label is terrible. So it really depends, it's a lot of factors. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think that was it for today, actually, uh, Giovanna. Oh, that was good. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for being here. Again, if you need, if you have more questions, if you forgot something, please send us an email. We'll be happy to help you. We're happy to answer the questions. Ludo, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you as well. And uh, yeah, that was it. Thank you so much. And I think we still have a little bit of time to enjoy the sun, the heat. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go outside. <laughs> Alrighty. Bye, guys. Enjoy Bye, guys. Have a nice evening. <laughs>